What's up guys, this is Gesture of None, and welcome back to another Ancient Warfare tutorial. So, today, as you might see by all the NPCs standing around, this is the tutorial on NPCs. There are a lot of NPCs in the Ancient Warfare mod, and they're not necessarily easy to understand, so today we're going to go through their types, what they do, and some of the problems with them, and also some uh, little ways to fix things, make things better, make things work in different ways. Okay, so, without further ado, let's get started. Go ahead and turn my HUD on. Okay, so... These guys are NPCs just like these guys. This guy is a combat NPC and these guys are worker NPCs. We're going to go through the details of uh, what they are and what they do differently in a little bit over there. First, I just wanted to show you some facts about all NPCs. The first thing is if you click on them, you will notice they have slots for gear and slots for orders. The upkeep order is the only one that can go in this slot and that is the order which tells them where they eat. I'm going to go through orders in another section, another tutorial, but uh, for now, just to say that you click Z on the town hall and that will set their town hall, but it is not usually necessary to give them a specific upkeep order because, um, well, they will automatically default to the closest one. The only reason I've given all these guys upkeep orders is because of um, a whole lot of town halls over there, which other NPCs are using, so I didn't want these guys to get confused. The other slot they have is for a work order, combat order, routing order, or I think that's it, actually. Ah, you also have the trade order. So those are for different kinds of NPCs. These guys can only really use the working order. And these guys use the combat order, which gives them their little patrol routes. And those are basically the facts of their inventories. The facts of their lives are that they need to have food to exist. They all come back to the town hall at one point or the other in the day to come and get food. And um, it's really important because if they don't have food, they'll just wait around by the town hall. And they will eventually get eaten by a zombie or... A skeleton or something coming past but that's basically it once you have your npcs set up all you need is a town hall and also these blocks for them to work or in the case of a combat npcs a route for them to travel or a place for them to stand and they will do their job if they have no orders and if there are no crop farms or other kind of blocks for them to work then they'll just wander around and um, if you happen to be doing anything in creative you can also control a few of their things in creative who owns them it affects how you interact with them their whether they are allowed to wander about and then you can also change their textures, but that involves some stuff outside a game that I'm not going to cover right now. Beyond that, the only thing to know about these NPCs, all NPCs in general, is that they don't handle doors well. I'm going to wait until it's night time, and then we're going to have a look at them going into their doors. All right, you see these guys going to their houses. It's not a real problem, but the more of them they are, the more of them are trying to get into these doors, the more of them are trying to get into their houses, the more problems they will cause themselves. So each of them opens and closes doors without regard to the other NPCs around them. So if you have more than one at a door, they begin to start opening and closing the door like that, trying to get through all at once, and eventually you end up with a, a pretty difficult situation. And let's say I repack this guy and place a whole bunch of them on the inside of here, let's say three or four. It doesn't matter how big the room is, what matters is how small the door is. Let's say I head like this. In the morning, we end up with a few problems. They start flicking open the door, each trying to get through without regard to the other. And if you get two stuck in the wrong place where they're just opening the door at the wrong time, they'll never end up getting through. So, doors aren't good. I mean, doors are good, but, you know, do your best to give one house per farmer or just to not use a door. Otherwise, you'll end up with uh, a big blockage in your system. And that's really the only thing you need to know about the problems of NPCs for now. So, the other thing is just to let you know that if you want to pick up an NPC or put them down, you can just click repack and that will put them into this little recipe thing which you can place wherever you want. Uh, I'm in creative so obviously I can pick one up and then put it down over and over again and it won't destroy them but usually it uses up the recipe when you place it. The other thing to know is that in the current version of the game, I, I can't speak for anyone else or for any other version, but in the current version of the game in survival, placing an NPC will cause your game to crash which um, is not pleasant. So I'm just warning you of that. It's unfortunate because it means you have to switch to creative in order to place these, these NPCs down. But, um, hey, sometimes it's like that. So, that's just a warning. Maybe your version of what Ancient Warfare doesn't do that, but it's just worth letting you know. So, there you go. That's all of the things that you need to know for the basics of Ancient Warfare NPCs. And now let's go and talk about the different types and some problems and some ways of using them. Let's just go through here, and then you'll find this guy. This, as you might guess by the name tag, is the worker NPC. The reason he's got a little special place here, along with these four chaps, is because him and these three, the the courier, the trader, and the priest, along with the combat NPC just over there, in that little room there, are the only ones that have their own recipe, their own special little recipe that you can make by crafting. So, you make the worker NPC with his recipe, which I can show you on here, just like that, two gold, a food bundle, and a wooden pickaxe, and he can't really do anything on his own, because 
In order for him to do anything, he needs to be given a tool. If you give him a hoe, he will turn into a farmer, like so. If you give him an axe, a lumberjack. If you give him a feather, he will, well, rather a quill, he'll become a researcher. And a pickaxe, he becomes a miner. And then hammer, he becomes a craftsman. Don't ask me why they're all facing this way, I don't know. Unlike them, these four over here don't need a tool, apart from the bard who can use musical instruments. Not that that does anything, but we'll get around to those in the future. So, these are all the basic crafting NPCs, and they do their various jobs. The worker does nothing. The farmer works the fish farms, the sugarcane farms, the animal farms, anything that can be farmed and eaten. The lumberjack, of course, works the forest farms, or rather, I guess, tree farms. Researcher does research for you. The miner, obviously, mines. And the craftsman, well, he works with anything to do with the auto-crafting stations, which we will see in a second. So, this is all the non-combat NPCs and also all of the other single recipe NPCs, and let's move on to the combat NPCs, which are a little bit different. So, this guy is a combat NPC, but he's not got a single tool, he's just the base level combat NPC. And he is the last member of the single recipe family. So, if you give this guy a sword, he becomes a soldier. If you give him a command baton, he becomes a commander. If you give him an axe, he becomes a medic. If you give him a uh, bow and arrow, he becomes an archer. And finally, if you give him a hammer, he becomes an engineer. These guys all perform different roles. The engineer actually doesn't do anything though because at this time the vehicles part of this mod has not been enabled as far as I know. So ignore the engineer, he doesn't do anything right now. He's just there for the sake of completeness. The commander obviously commands. He doesn't do anything apart from fight, although when you have given him his command baton, I've just taken it off him so as not to affect any of the other NPCs, he will give them a boost. If you look now, I believe they heal faster, they fight harder and so on. But I'm just going to take this off him because I don't want to affect any of the other NPCs right now. The soldier, of course, will fight with the sword, the medic will heal, the archer will shoot. And the combat NPC, if given no weapons, will do small one-handed attacks that I think do one damage. So um, better off giving them a weapon. As you might notice, they're all hungry, and that is because they haven't been assigned any upkeep because they live in these little cages and they'll never escape. They have very sad little lives. So let's move on to the crafting NPCs which we saw in the first room. They've all been given their little jobs here, and some of them are lacking of food. So I'm going to go ahead and top them up while I'm explaining to you about them. So, over here is the farmer, and if you see, if I just take out his wheat, he powers this block. Now, this is an interesting time for you to learn this. The farmer's job is not actually to farm, it's to power the farming block. He's got no food, so I'll give him some food. And you can watch here in this little tooltip at the top of my screen that he is putting power into the crop farm. So he's not actually farming the dirt here, he's just powering the block, and that is the same for all of these NPCs. If you look here, the lumberjack will put power into this block in order to give it the ability to plant new trees, so long as he is collecting food. But as you do right now, we just need to give him a bit more and he'll go back to doing his job. Lovely, there we go. And you can see that the block has power again. Of course, it's the same situation over here with the miner, who is currently doing a nice job of taking out my wall as well. This is the craftsman I talked about here. His job is to use the auto crafting station. You put a recipe in the auto crafting station and give it the resources and it will automatically process things so long as it has power and is being powered. A problem that sometimes happens with the auto crafting station is that it gets locked. I don't know why it gets locked in the same recipe. All you have to do is refresh it and it'll start processing again. A bit strange, but uh, it still works. Let's move on to the researcher. Now, the researcher is actually not working and that is because I use this mod without using the research system because I'm not a fan of it. But the research system can be used. You give it a certain amount of resources and tell it what you want to research, which is all of these things like so. And then it'll gradually work through that stuff. It isn't working though because I have turned off the research system, like I said, because I don't like it. And the last thing is this worker here, which is not doing anything because he's not got any specific job. If I give him a sword or here is a hammer, he'll get to work on being a craftsman. But on his own, he won't do anything. He's got no blocks anyway here, but even if he had, he wouldn't do anything. So the last problem with any of these guys is that if there is a monster anywhere near them, they will all stop doing their jobs. No matter what's happening, no matter whether they've got power, whether they've got food, they won't do anything. They'll just go and stand by their town hall blocks and wait to be killed or wait for the monster to be killed, whatever happens first. So let's just take care of these monsters. So how do we protect our villagers so they can get on with their work? Well, that involves the combat NPCs. So here are two very hungry combat NPCs. I'm going to give them some food just so they can do their job and then we'll put down some enemies for them to attack. This is a zombie, and as you can see, well, it's not doing very good in the sunlight, but um, they will fight off the zombie even without a tool, but they don't do a very good job because they're only doing one damage at a time. You can see that they, they didn't do very well there. They just kind of uh, failed against the onslaught of that zombie. Here is an actual soldier, and if I put this zombie down and give this guy the opportunity to attack, he'll do a nice job of handling him. 
but still not phenomenally. Over here is an archer who will do a much better job fighting it off because he doesn't give the zombie a chance to get close. There you go. Didn't take a single point of damage. And here is not actually a commander because he hasn't got a baton, but if I just hand him over a baton, now he is a commander and he will affect the rest of the troops. Let's see how well this soldier does now. Let's just give him a bit of healing first. Great. Let's see how well he does now. Pretty good fight. He, this time he ended up with 11. That could have been fluky, could have been better, but I do know that the commander does buff him. So there you go, that's the commander. He will also fight, but sometimes it takes him a little bit longer to register, and I'm not certain why. If I just give him a reset by picking that up and put it down, he should go and attack. That happens sometimes in Ancient Warfare that you just have to reset a block or an NPC. Let's give him some health to make sure he doesn't die. Great. I'm going to take that baton back because we will need it. And just for the sake of completeness, I'm going to show you that the engineer doesn't really do anything in battle. He hits him with his hammer, but um, he's nowhere near as good as a soldier, and he might die in this altercation. There we go. He burnt to death, which is a shame, but you know, sometimes it happens, and that's not very nice. So I was trying to show you with this that one soldier don't want to do a very good job of fighting off a particularly large amount of zombies. He might make it through. It doesn't help that he was on fire, but he might not make it through. He might. Let me kill off these guys so they don't distract our other NPCs. The best idea is to have a group of them. So let me just make sure they've all got some food. They have, they've got a lot of food. And then I'm going to go ahead and give this guy his baton back. And I think they've all got full health. Great. Let's see how they do against a bunch of zombies and a bunch of skeletons. You can see they all went straight for the medic, but I don't think that's intentional. You can see they make short work of it, work of it and the medic will go around giving them a bit of a healing buff. So there you go. These guys in a group can do a, make short work of any enemies. Skeletons are usually the hardest because they can keep the soldier away and keep shooting him. If he's got to cross over water, for example, they will eventually kill him because he won't be able to get to them in time. But an archer versus an archer or two archers versus one skeleton, it usually works out quite well. So there's a platoon fighting off a few enemies. Some people may have died there, but you can see they can handle themselves quite well. Over here, you can see a full platoon of combat NPCs all doing their job, or rather, they should be, but they're busy wandering about. So, I have one guy here following his orders to go back and forward across this uh, this area, but he's going into the water. Now, this is a problem with Ancient Warfare NPCs. They aren't very good at navigating terrain, even though they have routing orders and routing instructions and they have actual programming to allow them to pick the best route, they don't account for the fact that there's an ocean in the way or they could go over the bridge. So, we need to think of a way of stopping that from causing problems. What I've got up here is an inverted sky block and a hardened conduit facade, and that's just to allow me to make an invisible block, like so. So if I put this down, you'll see that it is actually invisible, but they do recognize it and decide that it blocks them from crossing. So if I place this here, it's not visible, but it will cause them to believe that they can't cross here. And now this guy will go ahead and use the bridge. And I'm going to put it on the other side just for the sake of safety like so. You can also use fences. I happen to use these because I think they look nicer. There we go. Now this guy is going to go ahead and use the bridge, despite the fact that if we check out his orders, which are here, he has been told to go from here to here, straight across the river. Even if he wasn't told, by the way, if he was told to go here or here or here, he'd still walk through the river unless it was blocked off. So if you want your NPCs to follow a specific path, you have to block off any other routes they have. I'm afraid it's just a fault of the mod. It's still pretty effective. I mean, you can't see any difference here. If you, Even if you had a nice river with um, a little blocked off exit, a little bit of fences stopping it or something like that, then this whole thing would still work. You don't necessarily have to have the various mods installed that allowed me to make this invisible block. So I'm going to go ahead and give this guy his orders back, and he's also supposed to be a commander. So I'll give him his command stick back for now and his orders so he'll get to work. But he's not being followed by any of his archers or his soldiers, and that is because they need to be told what to do. And we're going to do that with the command baton, which is its most useful purpose. I'm going to first have him followed actually by the two soldiers who are, I think they're milling about in here somewhere. Let me just find them. Okay, there we go. I didn't actually find them. I just made two new ones because I don't know where the other one went. There's supposed to be two and I lost them. So here we go. I'm going to give them both a command by selecting them and uh, right clicking. And then I'm going to tell them to follow by clicking the C button on the command NPC or rather the uh, combat NPC. I haven't given this command button yet. So they're going to follow that guy and then I'm going to deselect them like so. And then select the archers and have those two each separately follow one of the soldiers. And this, by the way, is the most effective way I have found of setting up a patrol. There you go. He's off following that one now, and I can deselect him and select the other archer. And I'll have the other archer follow the other soldier, which I guess is this guy, by pressing C. 
there we go. Now they're all doing their thing. The combat NPC leads the way, the two soldiers follow him, and the archers follow the two soldiers. So let's see how these guys now deal with a skeleton. I'm going to put this guy here, and they should theoretically cross the bridge and have a go at attacking him. Apart from that they got hungry and they decided to go eat instead. But theoretically they should be able to take him out so long as they're not hungry. Let's put them down as zombie, which is a slightly easier target, and see how they handle it. Okay, great. They took out the zombie pretty fine. Don't know what a zombie is. There we go. And then they'll return to their route straight afterwards. There we go. Now that that's all handled, I'm just going to show you one other function of the command baton. And that is that I can make this guy mount up by selecting him. Like so. And then having him jump on the horse. It's actually the same button as follow. And that is C. And now he'll ride his horse. But the NPCs do not do a very good job of horse riding in my opinion. They, uh, they tend to jump out a lot. They go a lot faster than it really makes sense for them to. And um, I'm going to go ahead and take him off that. I mean, it's a viable thing that you can do if you want mounted soldiers behind you. But uh, frankly, I prefer them walking. There's something a little bit off about their, about their horse, horse handling. If I can catch this guy, I'll tell him to get off. There we go. I'll repack him and just place him back down again. And this is a good opportunity to show you that if you have a problem with an NPC you have, just put him down and then pick him back up again. That usually resets things, and I've actually done it a couple times in this tutorial just to get things working the way they're supposed, they're supposed to. But I will let you know that once you've done that, it will clear any of the orders you've given by the command baton, and you'll have to reset them. It won't clear orders that you have put. Let me just clear this space so I can click. It won't clear orders that you've put inside of him, like, well, that sounds weird, like the combat order or the upkeep order, which we are going to talk about in a different tutorial. Sorry about that. So that's all the combat NPCs, but what are these guys all protecting? Well, that is their priest. They are here to protect their priest. So let's block this up just so that no one does any wandering, and I'm going to go ahead and commit a murder. Let's kill this combat NPC. I'm just going to make sure he's assigned to do his upkeep on this town hall, which has an effect on what the priest's job is. There we go. I've reassigned him to this town hall, and now I'm going to kill him which is not very pleasant at all. There we go. Off you go. Gosh, I'm not doing very much against him, but I guess he's got diamond armor. Right. He is nearly dead. And the priest is about to revive him. And... Poof! He's back. Right, there you go. He's back. The combat NPC is alive. He maintains his name, which he actually doesn't have one. Let's call him uh, Frank. And then, after that, that's about it. He drops all his stuff on the floor, which you can see I've now picked up, and you will have to go and manually reassign him new stuff. He doesn't come back at full health. He comes out back at about half. But at least he's back. At least you don't have to put in the effort of making any new NPC stuff. If you clear the list, you, the priest won't be able to respawn him. But there you go. That is the function of priests. They resurrect dead soldiers, but only soldiers that are assigned to them. You might notice that if I go out there and kill these guys who aren't assigned to the same town hall, let's go ahead and kill this archer. You will notice that he is not resurrected by this priest, and that is because he's not even on the death list for this town hall. Each town hall has a separate death list, and depending on what town hall they're assigned to, the de they will appear on that death list. So, that's all for combat NPCs. Let's move on to traders. Traders are pretty simple. Their job is to trade. I don't know what this medic's doing here. There you go, he's all sorted. So, over here we find a chest, and this is the chest where I've been telling this NPC to put his stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and take his trade orders away from him, so I can show you how they work. The first thing is, this is the inventory in which the Ancient Warfare NPC stores all of his things. And I'm going to go ahead and put this gold back in the inventory, and give him back his bag, just so that he'll be able to use it. And now, this is his trade order. I have told him to go from this chest over here, round this corner, and then back to this chest. And what his job is, is to trade iron for gold. If someone offers him iron, he'll trade it for gold. So he, he, he accepts iron and trades gold. Unfortunately, the trading system is not fully implemented, so there is no way of making this trader trade with that trader, who also sells iron in exchange for gold. Which um, is a shame, because that would be a really nice feature to have, but it's not implemented. In fact, you can't even make him pick up the iron from this chest. All you can make him do is follow a route and then offer him iron in exchange for gold. So if I give him this back, he's going to come over here. He'll wait here for a second and I'm going to buy some iron off him. Yeah, I've switched myself to survival mode and he should be coming around the corner in just a second. Here he comes. So now when he comes over here, I will be able to trade him iron for gold. Now, normally I won't be able to do this because he is actually my NPC and you can't trade with your own NPCs. But other people can trade with them. So if I set him as a different person, if I change his owner which I can only do from creative, 
I can now trade with him. Although, unfortunately, I no longer have any iron. I'm just going to steal the iron I gave him. And now I can trade with him without using any sort of uh, creative stuff. But since he is my NPC, normally I wouldn't be able to trade with him. In fact, I can only trade with these guys who do offer other stuff. So I can trade my gold to this guy in exchange for iron, which was uh, what I initially meant to do with my own NPC. But unfortunately, like I said, the trading system isn't properly implemented. I can't get my own NPCs to trade. Perhaps by the time this video comes out, they will be updated. But I'm not actually certain whether Ancient Warfare is still a live mod. Nonetheless, it's still a fun one. So this is traders. You have the option to trade with any of these guys. And if you don't own them, you can trade with your own guys, but they all need to be able to restock. I'm pretty sure that default NPCs restock from creative as in they don't actually have to pick up new stuff from a new inventory. And you can trade a lot of cool stuff with them. The livestock trader, for example, this one is actually broken, but normally has uh, spawner eggs. And there's also the bartender over here who has his own trades. So there's the traders. Like I said, it's unfortunate that we can't set up our own traders properly to trade with other traders and, and set up a cool uh, sort of economy going. But hey, it's a shame, but that's how it is. Next, let's move on to couriers. If we just come through this tunnel over here, here we'll find a courier running between these two boxes for infinity. So what his job is, is to take all of the roses out of one box and put them in this box. So I thought that it might be some of this backpack, but actually he's already finished his job. That was quick. I'm going to go ahead and take all the roses out of here and put them in here and let's see what happens here he is taking stuff out and he's going to run over here in a second and put them back in here we go here he is putting all the roses back into the box he actually stays there for much longer than he needs to i don't know why that is i guess it's because he's theoretically doing all the effort of opening the chest putting in closing the chest putting more in no idea, but this is what he does. He takes them from here and puts them in there or vice versa. And the reason he's doing that is because I have assigned him to do it using this routing order. Like I said, we're going to cover orders in a different tutorial, but they're pretty simple to use. Just target, press Z over here, press Z again, and uh, you tell them what to take in, what to put out. I'm going to go ahead and give them that. The couriers are one of the most useful NPCs. You can use them like pipes. You can have them transfer items. And if you've seen my uh, tutorial on how to make an automated village, then you can also use them to automate a lot of cool things. So, the last NPC that we need to see is the Bard, and unfortunately, just like the traders, the Bards are not properly implemented. So, if you go into the advanced GUI, you can add different songs and have them play at different times, but the they aren't totally functional. They do need to... They do have these cool tools available to them, the lute, the harp, and the flute, and you can make them use these at your leisure, but they won't actually do anything with them, they'll just stand there holding these sort of weird, symbolic-looking instruments. I'm assuming that if the mod is still alive, one day they'll update this so that you can have them play music for you. But for now, the guy just stands there and stares at you. Well, that's all. In a good English fashion, I think we'll end this tutorial in a bar. I hope this tutorial has been helpful to you. And if there's anything else you'd like to know, don't hesitate to let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment below if you've got any ideas, questions or suggestions. I will be making more tutorials on Ancient Warfare, so stick around and check through my playlist because there'll be more coming at some point. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.